Welcome to the special edition of the More Cheers podcast. We are here at SAB, ahead of the launch of Ziketele, Ismo Mongesako, our new audio series coming to broadcast and digital platforms near you. We're going to have a two-part discussion. The first is going to introduce us to SAB Sharp, the platform, the journey to this point, how it works, what the different pillars are. How is SAB showing up in our communities to champion responsibility? Let's get into it. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everyone doing? Absolutely fantastic. Welcome to the South African Breweries. My name is Uspewa Gwavundla. Honored to serve the business as the corporate brand director and also your host for this afternoon's conversation. Um, this is a really, really exciting day for our team here at SAB. SAB Sharp is now about two years old and um, we have been on an amazing journey of championing responsibility all over our country um, through really exciting initiatives and it's really exciting exciting to see so many other people that do that work in the room here this afternoon. The last time we had gathered in this kind of a way, you would have remembered it was our repositioning. And we had a new logo for that, which you saw as you came in outside. And SAV Sharp also has evolved um, to a logo that imbues the same meaning that our logo stands for. And the symmetry you see between the AB and the AR is really saying um, very directly that as SAB, we take responsibility as seriously as we take our very identity and our purpose. We believe very much as part of our strategy that we want to lead and grow the category, but we want to make sure that we're doing so responsibly and that it is very possible, and we are doing it in terms of our interventions of leading and growing, really innovating for our consumers while really pushing um, what we're doing in responsibility. And that is why we're ultimately here today. Ziketele Ismomongesako is an audio series that is going live next week, Thursday, on Sharp Thursdays. Um, <laughs> we are very, very, very excited about that. Turning Puza Thursdays into Sharp Thursdays has been a big part of our communications on this responsibility platform. And to have this groundbreaking first for our business, probably first for our category in our country, go on Sharp Thursdays is very, very important. And so our conversation will be split into two today. Our first half will immerse you into the world of SAB Sharp. What is it? How did we get here? What are the pillars? How does it work? How is SAB showing up in our communities around the country to champion responsibility? The second half of our conversation will be all about our audio series. We've got the creatives from our agency. We've got the actress who is the lead actress in, in, the, in the film, uh, sorry, in the audio series, as well as our senior marketing manager who will unpack that journey of how we're using creativity to deal with a societal issue. So, before we get into that program, I want to observe protocol um, and submit myself to it. I want to acknowledge the CEO of the South African Breweries and Accenture, Richard Rivard Karnak. Um, we want to acknowledge Johannesburg Metro Police Department, members of the collective, the SAV Sharp team, uh, media partners and members of the media. Said hi to a few of you outside. Thank you so much for being here. Um, our agency partners who are making this happen and have worked so hard to get us to where we are. Thank you in advance. I'm not going to wait for the end of it. <laughs> tell you thank you up front. Um, please put your hands together for Joe Public, iProspect, Aprio, Draftline, The Salt, BW Productions, and ZCMC. We've got members of our SAB family here, I see you. And of course, the best corporate brand team to ever do it, the SAB corporate brand team is in the house as well. Um, we're going to go into our program now, and we're going to have our first conversation, which is going to establish us in shop. I am honestly so excited to have this conversation because when we started SAB Sharp about a year or so publicly ago, um, we didn't get the opportunity to really do it in this way. And I'm excited to really have um, a deep dive into our journey, into how it works, and to really bring people along for this journey and help them understand how we're showing up to champion responsibility in our communities. I think firstly, Zolega, let's start with you. Um, talk to us about what exactly SAB Sharp is and how we've gotten here. 
Um, thank you, Spear. I think the video was also a really apt introduction. I think as a beer company, we've had a lot of introspection. We are fundamentally reimagining what a beer company should be. And as you've seen, our core purpose and mission is to create this future with more cheers. And that is fundamentally grounded in having safe, healthy, and thriving communities. So we want South Africa to be sharp. And it's at the core of how we do business. And we then said, where could we use our scale, our reach, and our expertise in order to do this? So we came up with four strategic areas that we believe we could make the biggest impact in the country. We said we want South Africans to live sharp by being economically included. And that meant we'll drive really strong entrepreneurship programs. Secondly, and that's why I'm excited to have that mic with us, we want South Africans to drive sharp. Um, our fundamental position is that you should have none for the road. And then thirdly, we want our brand teams and the agency partners to use their brand voice, their purpose, and their power to get the brands to talk shop. And then lastly, the retail organization. We've got one of the biggest sales force in the country, and they work with our retailers every single day. And their job to be done is to ensure that we sell shop. So we've really been quite deliberate in articulating clear areas we believe are going to impact. And that's what we've been doing for the past two years. And I've really enjoyed this journey, um, really telling that story, being immersed into it. And as I look at the rest of our panelists, um, each one of these strategic pillars um, is represented here. Talk to me about the power of partnerships in bringing this vision to life. Sure, I think many of us know the saying, if you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you really want to go far, you go together. Uh, beer by its nature is very local. We are in local communities, we're consumed by local consumers, so in what we do, we have to go with our people. Mm -hmm. And we are nowhere without our partners, both internally within the company and outside. So if I can use road safety for an example, and we look at the work we've done, we've worked a lot with law enforcement, and mm -hmm. I'm really proud to have Tata Botolo come with us, because what partnerships allow you to do is have honest conversations. Yeah. They ask you as a big corporate to also be humble and ask for help, and they allow you to get there in the right way. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what we've done with alcohol evidence centers and tackling um, road fatalities, we developed a blueprint together mm -hmm. with our partners from JPD. We then work together in getting roadblocks on the road, and then we're partnering in terms of how we capture that data. And I'm really proud of the team, and Barbara, being the mother of uh, SAB Sharp, has really been on this journey for many, many years, working mm -hmm. with a number of our stakeholders. And I think also leveraging partners within the organization. So if you look at Lance, who's from commercial, he's a right-hand man to corporate affairs. So partnerships are not only external stakeholders, but it's within the company to ensure that we can really make sure that the work we do um, gets the right results, that we're transparent, we're honest, and we're asking for help to get the best outcome for our communities. I love that. And I think you know, our business strategy is so clear. Yeah. We've got three clear um, points and levers that really make the magic of SAB happen. We understand that we need to digitize and monetize our business. We've seen the innovations in bees. We understand that we need to optimize our business. That's around making sure that we do the best we can with what we have. And we've got this one that really speaks to Sharp about leading and growing our category responsibly. That seems to some people like an oxymoron. Can you unpack how we see those two elements living seamlessly and authentically together? Number one, I think to have the word responsibility as a key strategic pillar is fundamental. You cannot grow without being responsible. Yeah. So we have not separated them. So when you have a Boris who's our CEO or a Yaku who's our head of sales or a, a Vaughan who's our head of marketing, when they think of how they grow, they have to couple it with being responsible. We cannot separate it. If you look at where we are as a country, load shedding is one thing, we get it. Water crisis is another, we get it. But we need safer communities. Above being a beer company, we're also parents. We are partners and we really want our communities to be safe. So as SAB, and as I've said, we are a very local business. We can't divorce ourselves from the communities in which we live, so we're very in tune with what's happening. So the growth we see requires that it's such that our taverns are growing, but they are responsible businesses yeah. that are respected in the communities. 
Um, we are a big road user, so we must be a safe road user, and we expect that of others. Um, so at the core of all our strategic pillars, we really are challenging ourselves. Remember, we're reimagining mm. what this company can be. We are challenging at all our touch points, how do we incorporate responsibility? And that's why you've got creative agencies here today getting us to talk shop, because we have to talk differently. Yeah. So the strategy has changed, it's evolved, and a big part of it is really about this growth, but this growth that will be fund fundamentally grounded in a responsible outlook in all areas of South Africa and I, of our business. And I love that, because that speaks to active citizenry as a corporate. It's not a fluff piece, it's not stuff we're saying for lip service. We've got real programs, real interventions, and we're actually beginning to see real results. We're turning almost two on SAV Shaft this year. Um, what are you most proud of? Um, a number of things. Um, number one, I'm super proud of the SAB team. Um, I'm proud that they've taken the time, the effort, the commitment to really put some hard work into this. Um, you know, driving responsibility in our country is not easy. Every day is a learning journey. So throughout the business, I'm super proud of the team. Number two, I am proud of the partnerships that we have that are enduring. Uh, partnerships are not always easy, but you, you, you learn so much. And then I'm proud of the results that we're trying to achieve. Um, if I can talk to our uh, responsible trading program, to, over the last two years, every year being able to audit 25,000 taverns and get to understand what's going on and have real conversations with our taverners is important. We're doing that. Number two, we've rolled out roughly 20 odd alcohol evidence centers um, along with our partners um, in law enforcement across the country. Um, just last year, I think we were able to enable 2,000 arrests. That's and that amazing. number, and look, um, it's a double-edged sword, I guess, but that number maybe needs to rise so we can give the message to South Africans that don't get on the road and drive. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. I'm hopeful for the future. Um, I, I remain hopeful and I'm really excited to see what else this platform can deliver. And I think it will speak to the job creation that we do in the foundation. Yeah. The unemployment we see in the country is real, but to have a long existing entrepreneurship program that retains or creates new jobs is very encouraging. So there's a lot to be proud of, but there's still some work to be done. Yeah, I love that. Not yet Uhuru, but <laughs> no, we're <not> definitely, <laughs> definitely doing the work. I want us now to double click into each pillar. And the first one we want us to discuss is the Live Shop pillar. An anchor of this pillar of SAB Shop is the amazing team at the SAB Foundation. Um, you ladies are some of my favorite human beings, and I'm a huge, huge fan of the work that they do. Um, SAB Foundation was set up um, in 2010 and has literally invested not just millions of rands, but I really believe that um, this team has invested their heart and soul to really tackle entrepreneurship in our country, the unemployment crisis that we have. And what I love about SAB Foundation is it's focused on the holistic inclusion of women, youth, and people with disabilities um, within the economic situation that we're in, that we're trying to propagate um, employers who can also create jobs. And there's a beautiful multiplier and a snowball effect. And you guys have got some impressive numbers that I wrote down because I want to be able to read them. <laughs> 5,229. That's the businesses and the entities that the SAB Foundation supported to date. 6,886, that is the number of new jobs created. And because we have to follow the money, 534 million rand to date invested in entrepreneurship all over our country. Talk to me, Idu, you are such an amazing team, you do such amazing work, you have so much passion in what you do to sh really shape the way that SAB shows up in communities um, in a way that's really dealing with a real crisis in our country right now. Give us an insight into the vision of the foundation and the work that you're doing. Mm. Sure, <laughs> thank you for that wonderful introduction. So I believe that the work of the SAB foundation embodies the spirit the intent, as, as well as the purpose of the Live Shop pillar, um, in that 
we work to create opportunities to empower um, individuals, communities, uplift them out of poverty, um, drive transformation through entrepreneurship development. And to date, as you mentioned, we have invested over 500 million um, in nearly 6,000, actually, um, SMMEs who are not only contributing to the economic growth of the country, they are creating jobs, but most importantly, they are working tirelessly to create opportunities and improve the living conditions of the communities that they are operating within. Um, and, um, you know, out of that five, almost 6,000 uh, SMMEs that we've supported, 70% of that are women. I think we can clap right there. I think we can clap right there. <laughs> Um, 50% are youth, 5% are people with disabilities, and a whopping 90% are people in rural and peri-urban areas. Amazing. And, and that demonstrates that we have been able to reach outlying areas, we've been able to reach areas that not everyone's able to reach, um, but also we're able to reach economically depressed areas where there isn't much of, you know, economic op opportunities are taking place and, and happening in those communities. Um, and I'll just give you a practical example because yeah. I think it's very useful to share some of these stories because we can talk on a high level about the impact, but if you're not ex really just sharing the stories, it's very difficult to comprehend. So um, one of the ladies that we support, um, Tulu Fellow, runs an organization called the Dress Dogs, um, and she works w in the Northwest province predominantly, works with the tribal authorities and local leadership there, to digitize the documents and the processes and to enable community members to be able to access valid proof of address documents. And if you are South African, you know that if you do not have a proof of address, mm. you don't exist. Facts. You do not exist. So yeah. you do not have access to banking. So you cannot be banked, you can't access work opportunities, you can't access economic opportunities. And she has identified this issue because it's close to her heart, and she's able to then enable that to happen, right? Um, and she's obviously generating an income to keep this operation going by working with local mining companies, um, to, you know, to fund this, this, this initiative. And they've been able to enable people to, you know, access those job opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you might think this is small, and I think because we're in Jobek base, we think, you know, what does that even mean? But here we're talking about the Live Shop pillar, which is about enabling people to access economic opportunities. And that one act unlocks so many other opportunities. And you know, even on the screens around us now, we're seeing some of the work that the foundation does through the Social Innovation Awards Initiative. Um, entries have just closed. Um, <laughs> but it is a beautiful annual journey that we go on. Talk to me around how we get people in and how it is that we work with these innovators. Yeah. So we open these applications once a year. And the 500 million that you just mentioned <laughs> is actually um, where we've made provision in terms of funding, but also we provide business development support, coaching, mentorship, as well as technical support for these businesses. So they do not only get funding, but they get coaching, which enables them. Because I think a lot of the times when we talk about business development, we kind of divorce the individual and the business. Mm. And what we found is that if you support the individual and make sure that they are okay, whether it's emotionally, physically, and so forth, that they're able to then perform and create that change that we're looking for. Mm. And so our programs are designed to cater for, for, for that individual as well as the business um, health and, 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 and also um, the funding that we provide. I really love that approach because it's not just throwing money at something. It's walking a real and meaningful journey um, with people to empower them to do better um, at, at what they do as entrepreneurs. I think that's incredible. And you know, so I wanna um, you know, hit it back to you around one of the other in interventions we have within this pillar, which is when in partnership with the Department of Social Development, we have rolled out a couple of um, gender-based violence um, support centers and identified hotspots. Um, talk to us about that journey um, and walking that within the Live Shop pillar. 
I think it's quite brave as a beer company to, to have a tough conversation in the country around gender-based violence. Um, and that was very much also spearheaded by one of our big brands, Carling Black Label, with the No Excuse Movement. Uh, we raised our hands as the brand and the business to say we want to take part and be part of the solution as hard as it is. Um, and I think um, it's not an easy journey. There's a lot for us to learn and there's a lot for us to do. So in our GBV program, we do three things. We find shelters in order to help, uh, be it the victims who need a place to go, to have that place to go. Number two, we support them with counseling in those areas, ensuring that they can get the right help. And number three, we provide them with, um, you could call it legal and police support in order for them to be able to log a case, get any legal support. So we really try and be a first tier support for people to, to get help. Um, this program continues to evolve and grow in the sense that we want to roll out a number of centers, but we want to have a number of women have a place to go. But effectively, our dream as, a, as SAB is to really not see this happening in the country. And I think we have to have brave conversations. So you'll see on an annual basis, we'll continue to have campaigns around what's driving it, what people need to do, where they can get help. Um, and I invite, and that's the, the, the thing about having partners, I invite people to, to go on the journey with us. Yeah. If you've got ideas on what we can do different to do better or how you can help, I think when it comes to gender-based violence, all hands on deck approach is required. And I think for me, what is significant to me about the Live Sharp pillar is it speaks very much to the heart and the soul of who we are as SAB and how we seek to show up in our communities, um, really reframing what it is that a beer company can do, really reframing what beer does. And I really do salute the amazing work being done. Let's give a big round of applause for Lift Up Hello. We're going to move on now in our conversation to the Drive Sharp Pillar, and this is anchored through our intervention in alcohol evidence centers. And so speaking to that special thank you to JMPD, we have Superintendent Dede Mike Butolo here. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. I think the journey we have walked with JMPD has been so amazing. I mean, even at our repositioning when we were reintroducing SAB to South Africa, we had the JMPD Choir, um, who are an amazing, talented um, bunch of men and women. And I really love how the JMPD lives this purpose um, in very real and tangible ways and this partnership has come to life in very meaningful ways to us so thank you so much for being here talk to us Baba around what it's like um, in the AECs um, what is happening how is this technology helping you to take what you're already doing and working hard to do to the next level uh, thank you for the intro um, I would like to start uh, from where we started with SAB our relationship started around 2009 when everybody has given up on law enforcement and more especially uh, drunk and driving because of we were looking at only one direction of law enforcement in executing. We said, let's change the face of, of, of law enforcement. People escaped punitive punishments from the courts because of the very same process that we were following. Now we wanted to change the face and say, let us bring back that machine that was suspended, which is the breath alcohol testing machine, which is the EBIT machine. They said, no, you can't bring it back because of the courts have overruled that. You understand? So um, we've got plus minus three, uh, 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 the brick and mortar structures. The other one is in Marlboro. The first one is in Marlboro. The second one is in uh, Central CBD, Johannesburg. The other one is at Vocational. And with the nine EBED evidential uh, uh, breath alcohol testing machines that we, we, we were assisted with by the SAB as well, meaning SAB has played a very provocative role in terms of law enforcement because of we now have can prosecute and can build up cases that are, can be in, in fact prosecutable in, in, in front of the courts because of, of, of the processes that previously we couldn't. Now, currently we can because of 
uh, uh, the interventions that they brought in. So since then, we've added what we call the mobiles. SIB last year gave the city of Johannesburg, I call it the city of Johannesburg, not JMPD, because of they were donated to the city of Johannesburg, about seven mobiles. The rationale behind the seven mobiles, in terms of the legislation, the arresting time frame, it's two hours. So anything, I'm just giving you an education. It's a free education. <laughs> Outside the two hours, it's no longer a legit or it's null and void. So we have to arrest within the two hours. We have to effect an arrest within the two hours. So we saw that the brick and mortar, it's out of reach and the distance of travelers, maybe it's, Johannesburg is divided into nine regions. Now a person who's moving from Orange Farm to Marlboro, it will take almost an hour right. through traffic into the center. You find the center, you come to the center, there's long queues. You find people waiting there. Now with a mobile, I stop you here, I test you here, I arrest you immediately there. When you leave the truck straight into prison, there's no investigation. The case is reminded, first appearance, the second appearance is prosecution. So meaning now, our prosecution through SAB now happens within three months. Whereas prior to SAB's intervention, our prosecution used to have what we call provisional withdrawals, complete withdrawals, people getting their bail back, people evading uh, punitive punishment because of, and, and led to what we call habitual drinkers. I arrest to me this weekend, next week it's to me again because of it. She knows that nothing is going to happen to her. <laughs> now, this day, today we say, Come back to me. <laughs> we'll arrest you. <laughs> but you won't, <laughs> you won't drink again tomorrow. Yeah. Because of what is going to come, it's going to affect you as well. Because of it's not going, only going to be drinking and driving. It will include other things. You have to be rehabilitated before you can be taken onto the road. That's the drive that we are now going to be looking at between our, our partnership and SAB. Up to so far, I think I've, I've, I've answered. I think it's, I think you've done. I, I can go a long way. You can. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And I think what the powerful mm. thing is you've done more than answer. You've given us an education. What I appreciate is though you're in law enforcement, mm. there is that clarity on understanding what responsibility looks like. Mm. Um, and I think the, the powerful point that he was raising around how not all, not all alcohol is the same. Um, beer is different. Um, beer is fundamentally a drink of low moderation. Um, we've got low to no alcohol options, mm. and that differentiates us within the alcohol industry as beer. Um, you know, and so that's something really powerful around being able to really pace yourself, being responsible in our occasions with our products, and normalizing responsibility in that space. I think that that's powerful. Mm. The second thing I took from what you said is the power of partnerships. There are people who don't get how we can have these kinds of partnerships, but they work, they have impact, and we're doing more um, with law enforcement and doing more to champion responsibility mm. in our communities in ways that matter, in ways that can be numerically um, articulated. I'm looking forward to our sharp impact report that we'll be releasing later on this year. But we've got numbers behind these interventions um, and these are real things and real lives. Um, and, and so that's why I say to him, catch them all. Um, and the beautiful thing that it does for us, even as employee, employees of SAB, um, is it's an inside out job, don't you think so? That that there's something about normalizing responsibility for us because we're involved in these spaces. We Uber everywhere. <laughs> you know, we, we, we have really cool activations with our brands, but we've normalized responsibility in such a powerful way. So none of this becomes puff piece, you know, lip service. This is really powerful, transformative intervention. So a huge thank you. <laughs>
And I think that message is clear. That message is clear. None for the road is not a cute hashtag. Um, it's a real thing because we are working in partnership with law enforcement to make sure that you get off of our roads if you're going to put the rest of us in danger. Um, let's move on now to the Talk Sharp pillar. And this is anchored by a group of individuals, multiple disciplines inside and outside our business called The Collective. They're in charge of looking after all of our marketing, our creative and our communications to make sure that it champions responsibility. Nadira, let's get straight into it. What does it mean to talk shop and how are you as The Collective championing responsibility in our communications? I think for us, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go back to a movie that I really like, um, Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility, right? Come on, Peter Parker. And I think the power of brands, and we shouldn't take this for granted, the power of brands, the purpose, the passion they have, really does something to influence society, either in a positive way or in a negative way. But at SAB, what we want for our brands, our most loved brands, is to say, how can we use that voice to make sure that we don't only champion responsible consumption of our product, but also how do we impact society to make the world a better place so we can ensure we have a future with more cheers. I think there's something powerful around the collective in and of itself. Talk to us about the multiple disciplines represented, um, both inside and outside our business, because we're not marking our own homework. No, no. <laughs> but yes. talk to us about the importance of self-regulation and that discipline um, as an important aspect of responsible marketing. Yeah, so in order for us to actually say, how do we talk sharp? How do we make sure all of our communications as the video said, conveys the right message to the right people at the right time, you need a code, right? You need something to keep you honest. And what we have to keep us honest as SAB is our responsible marketing and communications code. And this is what the collective uses, what marketing uses, and what our business uses to make sure that what we say and how we show up is um, we do so um, like within a responsible manner. But in terms of uh, the collective, I want to say hi to our collective members that are here today. There's one or two members, but... We have people from all over our business, and we don't only want to mark our, um, our own homework. Uh, we have an external chairperson, uh, Mr. Andy Rice. He is he's a juggernaut um, in the advertising a industry, legend in the a industry. legend. And what we do is, I, I mean, we try and make sure that our collective is as diverse as our country. So we have people of multiple ages. We have young people and more mature people. Um, we also have people from marketing, we even have people from procurement and logistics, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we try and do there is we try and make sure that whatever comes out of South African breweries, you know, the people that are in our ads and the messaging that we have out there, or even the occasions that those ads um, portray, just to make sure that it's done so where our products can be enjoyed, um, first and foremost, but to make sure it's done in a way that promotes consumption of our product uh, with dignity for all, essentially. And I like that. I mean, we've seen some shady things in social media. We we've have. seen horrible challenges. We've seen recklessness in our industry yes. and in others. We've seen tone deafness. And I think yes. it's really great to know that we have that body um, to keep us honest. Thank you so much, Nadir and the Collective. <laughs> Finally, we really go to the life force of our business, which is how we appear in the trade. We've got the Responsible Trader Program on SAB Sharp, in which we have multiple interventions um, in, in terms of auditing over, I believe it was actually about 30,000 um, taverns um, around South Africa. No one does taverns like mm -hmm. SAB does taverns. It wasn't 50, it wasn't uh, in a small community, it was over 30,000 in our country. Um, against our compliance standard. And it has three levels. We've got a silver, we've got a gold, and we've got a platinum. Um, and there are incentives that come behind each one. And so before we talk to Lance about what it looks like in the trade, here's a video that gives you an example of how the Responsible Trader Program works according to our gold standard. The Responsible Trading Program is a rewards program that aims at transforming our customers into champions of responsible consumption. This in turn will ensure that we protect our license to trade and our trading base. Trading responsibly is key for our customers to keep their doors open and protecting their livelihood. 
After learning what qualifies an outlet to become silver, let's check out the requirements for being a gold outlet. To become a gold outlet, one must comply with all the requirements for the silver level, as well as maintaining the next requirements. Firstly, the outlet must not sell or serve alcohol to people under the age of 18. A mystery shopper looking younger than 18 will be sent to an outlet to purchase a drink. In this case, the outlet should ask for an identification document to verify their age. Secondly, the outlet must not sell or serve alcohol to visibly intoxicated persons. A mystery shopper will visit an outlet, act intoxicated and ask to purchase a drink. In this case, the outlet must refuse to sell or serve the intoxicated person. Finally, the outlet should never sell or serve alcohol to pregnant women. And so Lance, talk to us about how it is that we are showing up in the trade. This has been such a beautiful evolution um, and a partnership between our commercial team and corporate affairs. Um, talk to us about how we're showing up in the trade responsibly. Yeah, um, thank you very much for the opportunity, Spear. I think um, what RTP did is for the first time ever, um, we got to integrate the responsible trading element as part of our commercial conversations. It, it, it's, been really, it's been really empowering and it's been very powerful for us to be able to educate both our retailers and our sales force about what it means to trade as a responsible trader. So I think that already was like a first and it's incredible. And I think for a company our size, it's a really important step that we've made. Further to that, besides just playing lip service to responsible trading, what we've actually done is we actually reward our retailers for actually doing the right thing. So in doing that, I mean, it's, it's almost like, imagine if you had to get paid to go to school. Wouldn't that be incredible? Like, it would, it would be, be an amazing. incredible thing. No one so, would have banked. So <laughs> over and above the tools that we give you and the empowerment that we give you, we also pay you and we give you rewards to ensure that you can continue to build your business and become a responsible trader. So I think it's, it's been really incredible. And one of the things that, that has happened is that, I mean, our sales teams are having weekly conversations with our retailers around, around what they need to do to ensure that they trade responsibly. We're getting an external company to actually go into our taverns, they audit, they check if everything meets the standard for what it is to be a responsible trader. So I think that in its own just shows that we're prepared to put our, our money where our mouth is and ensure that we take our retailers on the journey. I think that's really powerful, and I think it really speaks very directly to leading and growing the category responsibly. This is where we're actually making our money, and we're insisting on the normalization of responsibility in the trade. And I think that's a really, really very powerful thing. And I mean, you saw in these images, we've got fully branded outlets that aren't talking about our brands. They're literally fully branded, talking about responsibility as kuzaneni. Um, let's warn each other. Uh, you know, as beganeni, let's look out for each other. And these are the messages that people are having in the trade. I mean, you spoke about these over 30,000 um, taverns audited. I know that year on year, we've over pretty much doubled compliance, which is fantastic for an organization of our size and influence. Um, what do you feel is next? What is, is the next, the new, um, that we're going to do? Yeah, um, once again, another first. So what we're doing this year is that we are placing responsible trading front and center. In that, as a business, what we are saying is that we are not going to invest in a single retailer that is not a responsible trader. And I think that's an important step, and it, and it, and it allows us to take... <laughs> and I think further to that, you know, everybody talks about load shedding, um, there's also like an impact around safety and security within the environments that our retailers operate in. So this year, we're going to combine all of our programs. So all of the programs that we've got within taverns, from the, the FBOs that we do in the taverns, the Wi-Fi program, um, we're looking at a program around how do we enable our retailers to, to trade through load shedding by, by giving them inverters, ensuring that we give them security lights that will go on when the power goes off to ensure that we continue to make our spaces very safe spaces. So 
it's going to be about ensuring that you are a responsible trader first and foremost in order to qualify. And then what you're going to get as rewards are going to be things that are going to further enable your business so that you can continue. So we want to encourage all of our responsible traders and our investments will talk to that, which is going to be incredible. So just, yeah. I absolutely, asking. absolutely love that. There's something about, let's clap on it too. I agree. Yes, Mazami. I absolutely love that because what a lot of people are maybe sleeping on is that these taverns are businesses. And we treat them with that respect. And in, the, in a similar way as we are incubating and developing business in the Live Sharp pillar, we are enabling businesses in these difficult economic times to continue to thrive, to be the positive influences and pillars of society um, that they can be. And I think that's really powerful to put that behind um, our sales force. And so I want to thank this first panel for an engaging and an amazing and immersive conversation. Can you please give them a round of applause? Thank you so very much. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of the More Cheers podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please show your love, leave your comments, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast. Stay sharp, and cheers till next time. The information, statements, comments, views, and opinions expressed or provided in this podcast are not necessarily those of SAB and may not be current. This podcast was recorded and is being made available solely for information purposes and as general in nature. SAB does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any of the content contained in this podcast and listeners are referred to the disclaimer contained at www.sab.co.za.